Good morning students. Welcome to Bala's English today. In this class, we are going to learn about auxiliary verbs and modal auxiliaries. Come, let's begin the class. First of all, let's understand what is an auxiliary verb. Now, auxiliary verb in general is understood as a helping verb. What is a main verb? Main verb which can stand by itself. For example, I took the lesson. I took the lesson. Now, take, took, taken, all these, you know, the different forms of the main verb take. Okay, this is called the main verb. So, for example, I am learning the lesson. I am learning the lesson. Here what happens? Learn, learning becomes the main verb. Am is an auxiliary which is helping the main verb to form the tense of present continuous tense. So these auxiliary verbs very rarely can stand by themselves but they help the main verb to form a meaningful sentence. Now let's see what is an auxiliary verb in definition. Auxiliary verb helps other verbs to make tenses, passive forms, etc. There are two groups of auxiliary verbs, primary auxiliary and modal auxiliary. First, let us understand what is an auxiliary verb. Then we will understand what is a modal auxiliary verb. Now, primary auxiliary has three forms. That is, be form of the verb, do form of the verb, have. Okay, these are the various forms of auxiliary verb. And auxiliary verb, we already understood, it is a helping verb. Now, if you take the be form of verb, is, was, are, were, okay, these are the, even being, been, these are the B form of the verb. If you use them in a sentences, he is playing the cricket. He is playing the cricket. Now, play becomes the main verb. Is is the auxiliary verb, which is the B form of the verb. Sometimes, as I said, these verbs need not be a helping verbs. They can stand by themselves. How? For example, she is beautiful. She is beautiful. Now here, is is the B form of the verb. It is standing by its own. So we call it as a primary verb. Okay? Or the main verb. Not an auxiliary verb. She is beautiful. Sometimes, rarely, these auxiliaries can stand on their own also. Okay? Now what about modal verbs? These modal verbs can never stand on their own. First point. Okay? They expresses mood, tense and things like that. Okay, for example, ability, permission, okay, will, would, can, could, all these things, but they never be on their own. This is the difference between auxiliary verbs and modal auxiliary verbs. Okay, now primary auxiliary verbs, as I told you, B is used with other verbs to make a progressive and passive form of the verb. What is progressive? Continuous tense. I am reading. He was punished. Passive voice. Okay. Uh, he was punished for cheating. Okay. He was punished. So, people punished him. That is the active voice. He was punished for cheating. Passive voice. In these cases, we are using the B form. And do. Do is another auxiliary verb I said. Do is used to make questions, negative and emphatic forms of verbs. What is emphatic? You are stressing. Right. Now, questions. Do you know where Maria lives? Do you know where Maria lives? And next one is negative. I don't know her. I don't know her. And the emphatic, emphatic form of the verb. Do speak loudly. I want you to speak loudly. Do speak loudly. I am emphasizing. I am pressurizing you to do that. Right? In these things, you use the do form of the verb. Now, have. Have is used to make perfect tense. You know how to use perfect tense. Right? I have completed. Here, completed is the main verb. Have is the auxiliary. They have acted in a movie. They had forgotten to call me. So, be, do, have. Also, function as a primary forms of the verbs. I already told you. They can stand by their own as a principal verb also. So, let's see some examples. How they can stand on their own as a main verbs. Okay. For example, you are wrong. You are wrong. I gave you an example. She is beautiful. Now, another example is you are wrong. So, what is the verb here? Where wrong. So, what is verb? B form of the verb. What is B form of the verb? It's auxiliary verb. 
but in this case it is acting as a main verb you were doing the you are doing wrong you were wrong you are doing wrong when i say you were doing wrong now here where becomes the auxiliary verb it is helping verb right because the main verb becomes do right now she is a good singer she is a good singer is is a main verb she is singing well she is singing well now here is a auxiliary verb is is a auxiliary verb this is all about uh, primary auxiliaries now we'll see about the modal auxiliary verbs what are modal auxiliaries first point what you have to remember when you think about the modal auxiliaries they can never stand or they can never be primary verbs they always depend on another verb for help to complete the sentence now modal auxiliaries are never used alone a principal verb is either present or implied so you need a principal verb or a main verb then only you can use this modal auxiliaries for example i can fly now can is the modal auxiliary fly is the main verb right he should behave he should behave well okay now should behave he should behave behavior okay behaving that is uh, a noun he should behave in a good manner all that we say but you cannot say he should should is not the main verb here okay now modal auxiliary is another rule is they never take s with the verb for example in the present tense you know that there are actually we know that there are three persons first person is i second person is you third person is he she it and you know the plurals of these forms now uh, for the third person singular in the present tense what do you write how do you write i like sweets first person you like sweets but he likes so you are adding s to the verb right in the present tense but when you use this modal auxiliary you can never join s to this auxiliary verbs for example i can swim he can swim only you can't say he can swim or he can swims no so don't add s when you use modal auxiliary verbs in the third person singular okay they do not have infinites or part participles what is infinite two plus verb It's to go to do to buy to like this is t o two okay that is okay. they will not have modal auxiliaries and what is participle what is the present participle what is the past past participle is given taken you won't have any sort of participles also for this auxiliary verbs modal auxiliary verbs rather now another thing is can cannot i'm giving you the different uh, examples of modal auxiliaries first we'll start with can what does can stand for can informs you about the ability possibility to ask permission and to make requests and offer so it can function in four ways you can use this can in four types of sentences when you want to ask or when I, when you want to show your ability so when you want to inform the possibility when you want to request somebody or when you want to offer your help also you can use can how to use can we have examples i can swim what does it mean i can swim this is my ability i know swimming so i can swim well okay you are expressing your ability then he can win the match there is a possibility he can win because he is good but there is a possibility he may win or he may not win but he knows the rules regulation he plays quite well so there is a possibility okay second one first one is ability definitely he can second one is he can win the match there is a possibility can you turn the volume down this is a request can you turn the volume down that means what i am studying now you you gave a big volume you're playing the radio or the song so the volume is disturbing me so please reduce the volume so that i can prepare my lessons well right can you turn so you're requesting can you turn okay the volume down okay next one is offer what is offer you're offering your uh, help or something like that so can i help you to carry those heavy bags can i help you to carry those heavy bags so the bags are heavy but you never ask me for any help but i myself is offering help in that case also you can use can this modal auxiliary and express yourself can i do that can i help you okay can i write your notes can i help you in the homework can i help you in understanding the lesson all those things you can this is you are offering the help now just the opposite is cannot you know can means 
We will do it. Positive. Cannot inability to refuse permission. Example, I can't drive. So, I don't know driving. So, how can you expect me to drive? I can't drive. Uh, can you go watch a movie? Mother, she is asking permission actually. But the refusal of permission. Mummy, what mummy says? No, you can't. You can't go there. I can't send you. So, can't is refusing the permission. Now, what is could? Can, can't, could. Three together you can learn. So, could is also like can. So, wherever you use can, you can use same place as could. But what is the difference between can, using can and could? Could is actually in a polite manner you are asking. You are able to understand same permission, same request. Okay. But could is expressed in a polite manner. So, could is a polite form of can. And it used to ask permission, make request and offers. Could is also used to indicate ability that existed in the past. So, for past also you can use could. Okay. Past I have some habit. I could. You know, I could run that time. I could learn five languages at that time. Now, I am not able to do that. So, you are expressing your past experience. And in that case also, you can use could. Let's see the examples. I, in my younger days, I could run five kilometers at a stretch. So, in my younger days, I could run five kilometers at a stretch. So, that's my past ability. Now, if you ask me to run five kilometers at a stretch, I can run even Maybe I can run one kilometer, not more than that. You are able to understand. It's your past ability because you are in that time. And it could rain this evening. There is a possibility. But less possible. Could rain. I am not very sure. It could rain. Could I speak to your mother, please? Could I speak to your mother? So, you are asking politely for permission. Could I speak to your mother? Right. Could you help me with my homework? You are requesting. Could you help me? You are requesting in a polite way. Can you help me? You can. That's a request. Maybe if to your friend or something. But you want to be more nice to your friend. And you want to set it in a polite way. Then what do you ask? Could you help me with my homework? Maybe you are asking your mother, father, elders. Then you can use could. Right? Hope you understood. Next, must. What is must? Must indicates... It's very necessary, very, very important. So, you must do that. Okay? And must not, you should not do that. It's a condition. Not to do that is must not. Must is a definite. It is an order, something like that. You must. So, must indicates that it is necessary or very important that something happens. I must get my hair cut. So, already my hair is long. So, I must get it. Otherwise, people will call me by names. So, I don't want to tolerate that. So, I must get my hair cut. We must repair the roof. I want to repair my roof. I must repair. Why I must repair the roof? Otherwise, the water will fall down and everything will be dirty. I can't live. I have to wipe everyone. Every time I have to wipe my floor. So, why should I give room for that? So, I must. We must repair the roof. And must not is don't do that. Just the opposite. Must not. Negative. Must is a positive. Must not use to forbid. That means no permission. It is stronger than may not. May not. I may not is doubtful. Must not means it's an order. That's the difference between these two. Okay. Students must not play in the parking area. Students must not play in the parking area. Why? What happens if they play? Must not is a very powerful word. That means you should never play in the parking area. If you play in the parking area, that is car parking area, some car may come fast and you can get run over by the car. So, what happens? People may lose their lives. So, students must not play in the car parking area. We must not tell a lie. Actually, it's a condition. You must not tell a lie. But, we do sometimes. But, as far as possible, you don't do that. So, we must not tell a lie. So, hope you understood about must and must not. Next, we'll go to will. Will is actually, it indicates uh, future events. Will, future tense, I will. Usually for uh, first person, I and that is singular and plural, we, you use shall. But will is used also as a model auxiliary. You can, it indicates future but, right? Will is used to express future events, willingness, promise and ask something to do something. And ask someone to do something. Okay. 
how will you ask someone to do something we'll see the example annie will be 10 years old next month it's a future event now she is not at 10 but next month she will be 10 i will come with you it's a promise definitely i'll be with you okay future i will do whatever i can to help you so i will do whatever i can to help you so if you give me a permission i will do that will you lend me some money will you lend me some money will you it's an order actually can you is request but will you lend me some money it's an order so will you be quiet will you be quiet it's also a somewhat like an order but a willingness you can say will you be quiet if you be quiet i can be the position to explain to you better now would will past tense is would you know that would is used as the past tense of will to express past habits i would have done that than that time okay not now so would is used as the past tense of will to express past habits willingness to willingness and determination in imaginary situations repeated actions and in polite requests as you use could for can as a polite request you use would in stuff will will you help me would you please move a bit there is a difference both are actually are asking permissions but would is used for a polite manner okay we'll go for the examples she said that she would not live there anymore she said that she said already she told she told that or she said that she would not be there okay she would not be there anymore so i can't compel her already it's been decided so past action i would like to meet him i would like to meet him politely you're asking i would like to you're offering i would like to meet him he's a nice person so i would like to meet him after dinner we would sit and chat that we used to do after dinner we used to so we would sit and chat that time but now no time so everybody is busy with their laptops so that time after dinner we would sit and chat he said he would try his best to help me he said he would try his best to help me so it's a willingness i would hate to miss the show imaginary situation i'm very much interested to go to the show but i would hate to miss the show so if i don't get permission i won't like it somehow or the other i want to see the show so i would hate it if they don't give me permission she would always carry an umbrella during monsoon so this is a repeated action you know whenever she finds the clouds are dark immediately she puts her umbrella and put it in the bag so she would always carry an umbrella during a monsoon she won't even take out probably so she would always carry an umbrella during monsoon so that's the usage of would now the last one is shall should are there are three things we are about to see shall you know it is again for future tense and also i told you first person and uh, plural first person you take it and also it is used for in the future and to make suggestion or to express a command shall is used to show the strong possibility or near certainty of an action or event which is to take place in the future make a suggestion or express a command now examples don't worry i shall be there to help you don't worry i shall be there future certainty in future you say don't worry i shall be there to help you shall i drop you at the station you are suggesting you no know, what i can drop you i am free only so shall i shall so i can i can i also you can use can i means permission shall i means suggestion okay you shall go at once it's very important so you shall go there at once it is a command now should should this equal to shall in indirect speech both mean the same but it is indirect speech so past tense it indicates it used to express obligation advice etc you should tell the truth if you are not feeling well you should consult the doctor so you should tell the truth always you should tell the truth it is an obligation if you are not well you should consult the doctor right now ought to ought to usually we don't express so much in a language but it's a very important uh, you know model verb which you should uh, use it in the daily language so your language will be good and apt it will be so ought to expresses duty necessity desirability and similar ideas 
It is often used to advise people to tell them that they have a duty to do this. You ought to. You have an obligation. Necessary it is. You must do that. For example, you ought to attend school regularly. It's your duty. You ought to attend college regularly. You ought to help the needy. You ought to buy some furniture. It is 10 o'clock. He ought to return home. So what happens if he doesn't return home? It is a must. You know, he ought to do that. Otherwise, he may land up in some problem. So these are the things about auxiliary verbs and model auxiliary verbs. Hope you like the video. So if you like the video, if you learn something from this video, please subscribe my video, my channel, share it to your friends and put a like to my video. Thank you so much students.